Well, Thank thanks, you. guys. We just teased it. We're going to talk about energy, which was one of the best performing sectors today in the S&P. Natural gas rising 7%. First day, or best day, I should say, since early March. And on the equity side, Pioneer Natural Resources jumping after the Wall Street Journal reported ExxonMobil has held early stage talks to acquire the natural gas and oil exploration company. Let's bring in a truest managing director, Neil Dingman, to discuss. Neil, I want to get your thoughts on this. A, is Pioneer a takeover target? And B, is Exxon in the market to, to expand when it comes to oil and gas production? Um, thanks for having me, Morgan. I think the answer is yes and yes. I think not only not only Pioneer, but you have Pioneer in a slew of, of my EMP stocks that are all trading close to their historical lows. So again, I think that the valuation makes it compelling. And then secondly, when you look at even large caps, caps like uh, majors like Exxon, um, you know, one thing that they're always looking for, they always want to increase their inventory. You know, people forget about energy is the one one sector that if you stand still, about it, almost a third, you know, quarter to a third of your production declines each year. So these companies are always on the hunt for inventory. And given the valuations right now, I think it makes a lot of sense. I was just going to ask you about valuations because energy is one of the few sectors we've seen rip higher in the last <laughs> couple of years. So, so you're still saying that there are names here that are um, attractive takeover targets. What are they? Yes, I mean, I look right now, and I think guys want inventory. So. The, the, if you stick with the Permian, I think, you know, maybe not as large as Pioneer, but you have other public companies like Matador, MTDR. You have Permian Resources, two smaller ones. Uh, maybe even if somebody would take a look at the Eagleford, which I think is equally as compelling as the Permian, somebody could look at Marathon Resource, M uh, MRO. And again, what's the same for all three of those uh, very cheap stocks uh, just on a relative and on a historical basis. But, Neil, if we get a recession, a global recession even, won't energy stocks take a hit? You know, good question, John. They, they, they will, but, you know, just a week or so ago when OPEC Plus came in, I, you know, again, where there was and there is concern about demand taking a hit because of inflation, I think now the new supply, you know, what I'd say the new floor that's been put in by OPEC Plus, I believe materially outweighs that. I mean, you, you definitely have some some anxiety about what could happen with uh, demand. But I think anything that happens, OPEC plus basically stated, look, they're willing to come in and keep cutting as much as necessary. So I think, look, I think you have a floor at least at seventy five dollars, which makes this group look more attractive than it has in years. Yeah. And we've talked about it over the past week, this idea of an OPEC put in the market. Where do you think crude prices go from here? And just as importantly, where do you think nat gas goes? Good, both good questions. I think if right now, if 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 the, John mentioned it, look, if inflation dies down and demand starts to take off, uh, you know, definitely there's possibility of getting towards this triple digits, towards a hundred dollar oil. Uh, you know, gas on the other hand, we're all waiting to 2025 when LNG. There's a lot of projects that have been FID'd. Uh, I don't think gas does too much until maybe a little bit this winter. But again, beginning 25 when all this LNG demand comes in. You could really see gas take off. I'm talking four, five, six dollars. But again, that's probably not until about 2025. Something we don't talk about very much: MLPs, Master Limited Partnerships. They tend to behave kind of similarly to REITs, given the tax advantage status. Given the interest rate environment, should we be talking more about these? Is there opportunity here? I do. We, we, you know, we also cover a number of midstream companies that make a lot of sense. That a lot of them, even some of the bigger ones, are yielding six, seven, eight percent. But it's still hard to compete with a lot of these EMPs if you include their variable dividend. You know, the likes of Marathon or Devon or some of these others are, you know, Devon especially, or even Pioneer, the one we're talking about, both have yields over 10% if you include their base plus variable dividend. So as much as I like some of the midstream, as much as the some of these MLPs you mentioned with a nice dividend makes sense, the upstream these days provides even a higher dividend. So it seems like hmm. that seems like where investors are sticking.